Well, in our first story, the Member of Parliament for Damango, who is also the Lands and Natural Resources Minister, Samuel Abujinapo, has been banned from visiting any palace in Gonja land. The King of the Gonja Kingdom, Yamurua Bikuno Tutsuali Jeusuali, who issued this ban, described the lawmaker as disrespectful, treacherous, and a threat to the peace and unity in Gonja land. He was speaking at the Japa Palace after a demonstration by the youth of Gonjaland against the MP. The chiefs and people of Gonja Kingdom Sunday afternoon demonstrated against the MP for Damongo and Lands and Natural Resources Minister Lawyer Abujinapo for his alleged disrespect for chiefs and his interference in chieftaincy and traditional matters. The MP has in recent times been a key or disrespecting the authority and traditional rulers in Gonjaland for political reasons. Though the MP has denied this in a statement, the chiefs and people of Gonjaland insist the MP must be called to order. King of Gunja Kingdom, Bikunutu Swale Jiwu Swale, through his interpreter, enumerated some of the reasons for the ban. He accused Abu Jinapo of using political power of government to circumvent the traditional authority and orders of the Yabun Ra in an attempt to evade accountability and counter the orders so given by the Yabun Ra. He stated that he will deal with any chief who will welcome the Damongo lawmaker to his palace. Let me state this authoritatively that from today, no chief in Gonja land should allow Abu Jinapo to come by himself or lead or accompany any government official or politician to any palace in Gonja land. Any chief who disobeys this order will have himself to blame. Presenting a statement on behalf of the youth of Gonja land, the chief of Sakpala, Janton Ra Peter Iwusi Yakubu, re emphasized the ban. The king will never grant audience to any government delegation, political party, or any person who pays him a visit, whilst it includes Honorable Samuel Abu Jinapo. Until he learns his tradition as a royal and learn how to respect the authority of the Yegomura, and this statement is final and binding on all paramount chiefs within the Gonja Kingdom. Meanwhile, security analyst and lecturer at the Kofi Annan Peacekeeping Training Center, Dr. Victor Doke, says if the MP Samuel Abujinapo and the MPP do not manage the situation properly, it could adversely affect his political chances in the December elections. Now, it would only aggravate the political space if the situation is not handled well by one, the minister himself, and the government at large. Okay, so you're talking about the multi stakeholder collaborations to address the issue so that they may even benefit political wise from that region. Other than that, then trust me, then himself and the whole party that he represents will be labeled as disrespectful and hence will affect the fortunes of the political party and the government at large. Now, Ghana is racing against time to capitalize on its lithium discovery amid plummeting prices and the threat of synthetic alternatives. George Queening has been engaging stakeholders and residents in the areas where the mineral was discovered who strongly oppose the agreement, citing concerns over transparency and fairness. In October 2023, the government of Ghana signed the first lease agreement for lithium mining with Atlantic Lithium at Ewoya in the Infantiman municipality of the central region. The lease agreement has been laid before parliament after several failed attempts. Nine months into the agreement, developments are ongoing at Ewoya and other catchment areas, including Krampa Krum and Krofu. Stakeholder engagements have been held, including a recent public hearing in June, where the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, outlined its impact assessment. However, the youth are still not in support. The EPA are saying they have brought the impact assessment, what they did, but none of the youth has even get access to read about this thing. We don't know what is even in the, in the EPA statement. We want the project to come and stay, 
But we don't want the project to come and stay, and after the project is gone, we will become miserable. No. This is not our, uh, our motive or our vision. We want a bright future. A committee has also been set up to look into issues of resettlement. Krampa Chrome is one of the catchment areas where the mining will be taking place should the green light be given. And as you can see behind me, most of the buildings here have been earmarked for demolition and the households here will be resettled to a location yet to be identified. Until the death of one of the workers at the project site on July 9, exploration activities were ongoing, which have now been suspended to allow for an investigation. The company has committed to incorporating lessons learned from the investigation into its health and safety protocols. Some farmers will be losing their plot of land for the purposes of the mining, and AC Kwachua and Ama Foyua are part of them, and they'll be losing approximately four acres of land and what they are seeking is decent compensation that will resonate with their toils over the years. Till today we don't know the compensation package. Transparency and fairness is very important in deals like this. Employment should extend to indigenous as well. We'll be losing our farms and so our husbands and children may be the ones to cater for us when they are employed. Ghana may not have derived enough from gold mining, but the founder and president of the Africa Institute of Extractive Industries, Dr. Tony Urban, says this is different. Sometimes we even exaggerate how much we haven't gotten from mining. I mean, even Obuasi, which we overly criticize. I think, yes, we could have gotten more from Obuasi, but who built the whole township of Obuasi? How did it come about? It wasn't there before the mine went there. It was the mine which went there before the town grew. So it is not, you know, sometimes it's difficult to say this. While Ghana awaits approval of the deal, the price of lithium continues to fall globally. The introduction of artificial materials like N2116 is also threatening the replacement of lithium. A former chief executive officer of the Minerals Commission fears Ghana will miss out if there are further delays in approving the deal. The lithium, we must grab the value as we can until it becomes valueless. Let's, let's see how it goes, but the, the earlier the better. Because they say early bird catches the worm, so let us do it. But you can't do it by trampling on other people's uh, leg or feet. You have to engage them, bring them on board, let them know that this is for you, you're going to benefit. Royalties paid for gold are 3%, whereas 10% has been agreed upon for lithium. Civil society organizations are calling for a review of the Minerals and Mining Act of 2006 at 703 to reflect the current lease. George Quinn, TV3 News, Ewoya, Central Region. In other news now, Ghana faces a harsh reality as the cost of living crisis deepens. Soaring inflation, escalating food and fuel prices and a weakened city are hitting households hard. My colleague Noble Crosby Annan has more in this report. Inflation running wild, prices of food and fuel skyrocketing and the Ghanaian city taking a nosedive against major currencies. Families are finding that their cities cannot stretch as far as they used to. A trip to the market for foodstuff now leaves a deeper dent in the pocket. Last year, by this time, the Nanka will form Kakrobia to me at 20 cities on Yabi, 30 cities on Yabi Koguan to me define. By a nano, no boy, a thing. I have 55. I have 45. According to the General Secretary of the General Agricultural Workers Union, Edward Carraway. Factors including the government's commitment to agriculture and illegal mining are to blame for the current crisis. If government investment is reducing, it is possible that total output would also be uh, reducing because farmers will not be able to afford all the inputs to support production. The second thing has to do with Galamse, which is so major. All agricultural lands are all encroached. 
although government may have stepped in with subsidy, social protection programs, amongst others. The feedback is mixed. A finance and economics lecturer at the University of Ghana, Professor Patrick Assuming, says these interventions to reduce the prices of food have fallen short. The flagship agri programs were probably successful in the first few years. It hasn't been since. That's one aspect. And then the other aspect is that we didn't, the, the interventions were not comprehensive enough in the sense that we didn't look at the whole chain from production to distribution to the final consumer. So that aspect is also there. Mm. So all of these have contributed to the fact to we seeing the high food prices in spite of uh, uh, the, the intervention. Member of Parliament for South Dioxin Nelson Dafiamekwa agrees the implementation of the government policies have been poor. What is happening is that they, they implemented the program poorly. There was no assessment. For private legal practitioner and political commentator Martin Pebu, the situation is worsened by the arbitrary increase in prices by some traders. A lot of this cost of living crisis can also be attributed to the sellers, the traders. We are overstretching it. There is something about the psyche of the Ghanaian trader and supernormal profits. The profits we make in trading are I mean, beyond reason. Not only are food prices on the rise, but fuel prices are also climbing. I swear, we are going to die. Uh, it's more, the government is not thinking. It's very disturbing us. As I did, when you buy the fuel, when we are working, you, can, you cannot get a sense that what you want. Driven by global oil price spikes and the weakening Ghana city. We are so fatigued by how rapid prices of, of fuel, fuel goes up, mm -hmm. the frequency. The transport operator has no choice but to increase transport fares. Transport fares or transportation play a major role in food distribution. The situation is dire. Public discontent is bubbling. Amid these challenges, Nano Hining To, a senior advisor to Alan Shumatain, says the movement for change brings hope. The state in which we find ourselves, MPP is still telling me, or Hining To, and Ghanaians, that we should still vote for them. NDC couldn't stop it. MPP couldn't stop it. If your mama tells me I'm going to bring an agricultural revolution, I say, what shows? If your Baumia tells me I'm going to bring agricultural revolution, I'll ask him what shows. If Alan Chamatin tells me I'm going to bring agricultural revolution, I'll say yes, I believe you because I saw you bring a revolution in the automobile sector. In all of this, Ghanaians are trying hard to navigate through this crisis. Noble Crosby and TV3 News Accra. Now, President Ikufuado has urged for strengthened partnerships and collaborative efforts between Africa and the Arab world to tackle complex challenges such as economic instability, geopolitical tensions and climate change. He noted the need for stability in areas including health, food security and debt crisis. Speaking at the launch of the Arab Bank of Economic Development in Africa, Badia's 50th anniversary and the inauguration of the Arab Africa Financial Consortium in Accra, President Ekufado emphasized the importance of investing in human capital, particularly in education. He noted the critical role of education and skills development in unlocking potentials and driving sustainable growth. We must it redouble our efforts to ensure that every child in Africa and the Arab world has access to quality education. We must also invest in vocational training and higher education to equip our young people with the skills they need to thrive in the economy of the 21st century. By investing in human capital, we can create a more inclusive and prosperous future for all our citizens. Chairman of Badia's Board of Directors, Dr. Fahad al Dusari, assured that the Arab Africa Financial Consortium, AAFC, will fully utilize its capabilities to promote an accelerated development for Africa. Following the successful launch of the African Financial Institution Network last Friday, I can confirm that Badia will spare no effort in ensuring this consortium succeeds in 
realizing the, the vision of Af Arab Africa financial institution collaboration and coordination for leverage and resources for the continent. Now, in international news, U.S. President Joe Biden has announced that he will end his candidacy for re-election, saying it was in the best interests of his party and country. It comes four months before Americans go to the polls, appending the race for the White House. Well, U.S. President Joe Biden's withdrawal follows weeks of intense pressure from fellow Democrats after a faltering debate performance against Republican Donald Trump at the end of June. In a letter posted to his social media, Media account, he said it had been the greatest honor of his life to serve as a president. He said in his statement he would address the nation on the matter next week. Meanwhile, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris has formally uh, found to run for presidency. All political science and public policy analyst based in the United States, Dr. Hayford Insia, says the chances of the Democrats that winning the elections is high if they go ahead to approve the endorsement of Kamala Harris as the presidential candidate. They are diehard Republicans. They are diehard Democrats. We have independents and then the swing voters. There are many people who don't like uh, President Trump, right? But... Because of the controversy surrounding um, President Joe Biden, they didn't know what to do. But now that Joe Biden has dropped out and endorsed Kamala Harris, I think the independent voted and the swing voters, even the Republicans who don't like Trump, who align with Kamala Harris, especially she's a woman. The United States is yearning for the first female president. So Kamala Harris, others are also talking about uh, Michelle Obama, Others are saying that we should bring back uh, Hillary Clinton. And any of these three women stand a chance of beating President Trump. Well, the Ministry of Youth and Sports has denied any involvement in the travel of the 11 alleged Paralympic athletes who absconded after landing in Norway. In a press release, the ministry stated that they did not receive any communication from the National Sports Authority or National Paralympic Committee on the travel of these Paralympic athletes uh, for the Bergen Marathon in Norway, which was held in late April this year. They also stated, uh, quote, we are actively working with the rest relevant authorities to investigate the matter to ascertain the issues surrounding the incident. Necessary sanctions would be brought to bear on all parties found culpable in the matter, unquote. Now, of the 11 athletes, one has been reported dead, while the other, by the name Nana Entry, has been arrested and detained by the Norwegian security officials. And that's how we wrap up the 6 a.m. news right here on TV3. My name is Judith Brown. We'll go for a short break. We'll be back with the rest of New Day. Good morning.